Boeing is totally a disaster. Following the serious incidents involving the Boeing Starliner, NASA recently discovered that another Boeing project, the SLS Booster, also fails to meet safety standards for carrying people. What the heck is going on? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On July 16, NASA and Boeing popped the champagne for the rollout of NASA's Space Launch System (SLS) Artemis II booster of the Space Agency's McCood Assembly Facility in New Orleans. This event is deemed to be a big success for Boeing because, after many years of delay and burning a lot of money, they finally completed important hardware for the first crewed mission for a trip around the moon since the 1970s. Next, the Artemis II hardware was manufactured at Mikud, which has been a part of leading some of the U.S. greatest achievements in space exploration, including the amazing accomplishments of the Apollo missions through 135 shuttle missions. Currently, core stages and future exploration upper stages for the next evolution of SLS, called the Block 1B configuration, are in various phases of production for Artemis 3, 4, and 5 at this facility. However, NASA's Office of Inspector General, OIG, recently exposed the dark side of both the manufacture in the McCood facility, as well as the work Boeing is doing on the next version of the Space Launch System. The report released on August 8th unveiled three main issues as follows. The first one is 71 Corrective Action Requests, or CEARs, issued by the Defense Contract Management Agency, DCMA, from September 2021 to September 2023 regarding Boeing's SLS work at Mikud. That number of cars, the DCMA said, is unusually high for a spaceflight program at this stage in development. Of the 71, there are 24 being more serious Level 2 cars. According to DCMA officials, Boeing's process for addressing contractual non-compliance has been ineffective, and the company has generally been non-responsive in taking corrective actions when the same quality control issues reoccur, the OIG report states. Secondly, there are welding issues on a liquid oxygen tank section intended for the Artemis III mission were caused by Boeing's inexperienced technicians and inadequate work order planning and supervision. Thirdly, Boeing is using an Earned Value Management System EVMs, that has been disapproved for use by the Defense Department since 2020 due to deficiencies, preventing the company from producing a realistic baseline delivery date for the Exploration Upper Stage EUS. The report links these quality problems to a lack of a trained and experienced workforce at Boeing. The human is also attributed to one of the reasons for the extremely high cost for EUS. NASA projects EUS spending will decrease decrease as workers are moved off the project. We project Block 1B annual costs will remain at 2023 levels through at least 2026 before tapering off in the out years. The new exploration upper stage is one of two major upgrades that distinguish the SLS Block 1B crew from its predecessor, but it's too expensive as it accounts for more than half of the $5.7 billion development cost for Block 1B. The report criticized the cost has gone up $700 million since the agency made a baseline cost and schedule commitment last December. While NASA has promised to reduce EUS spending, its budget projections do not include the additional funding needed for EUS work through 2027, risking delays to the planned Artemis IV launch in late 2028. The EUS development cost has already grown from an initial $962 million in 2017 to a projected $2.8 billion through 2028. The OIG report concludes that, given Boeing's quality management and its related workforce challenges, we are concerned these factors could potentially potentially impact the safety of the SLS and Orion spacecraft, including its crew and cargo, it makes several recommendations for NASA to improve Boeing's quality management program and cost overrun analysis, which NASA accepted. Nevertheless, the national agency rejected the fourth recommendation calling for financial penalties for Boeing's non-compliance with quality controls. Their argument is that this recommendation directs NASA to institute penalties outside the bounds of the contract. Instituting financial penalties outside the bounds of the contract subverts the control process of the contract, they said. So how about you? Given Boeing's failures in the SLS project, do you agree that they deserve financial penalties? Show your agreement by commenting, dump Boeing, in the comments section below. Honestly, it seems like NASA will protect its favorite contractor, Boeing, at all costs. 
keep in mind that in the past, they have repeatedly been too hands-off in watching its troubled supplier. In 2019, NASA required the company to accomplish Artemis III's core stage in 2024. But until now, they just have done the part for Artemis II. The core stage is the first newly developed stage of the SLS and began to be produced in 2014 under multi-billion dollar cost plus contracts. A cost plus contract is a type of contract where a contractor is paid for all allowed expenses, plus a fee, often 10% due to technical challenges all but certain to arise. The disadvantage of this type of contract is not to encourage a company to move quickly on a program, especially as businesses seek to maximize profits. This is because the longer a contract goes, the more money it costs and the greater fees it generates. For that reason, it would not be unfathomable if the contractors deliberately extended their production time. Since 2014, Boeing has begun to experience a number of issues in establishing SLS production that caused significant delays to schedule. A number of fuel tubes that had been contaminated before delivery by the supplier resulted in the decision to reinspect all engine section tubing, which caused a delay of several months. The vertical assembly center, a critical tool in the manufacture of the core stage's propellant tanks, was initially improperly installed such that the tool was not able to properly lift stage components into position. When the defect was discovered in September 2014, it became necessary to completely rebuild the vac. Later, welding issues encountered throughout 2016 would then cause more issues. Further delays resulted in February 2017 from a tornado strike at the Michoud Assembly Facility, which damaged buildings and delayed production of the first core stage. Even its test phase, which kicked off at the beginning of 2020, also didn't happen smoothly when facing long-term delays in response to the spread of COVID-19, and then technical problems on both the hardware and infrastructure. As a result, we had to wait until November 16th to see its first flight on the Artemis I mission, in which it performed successfully. Can't help but mention, despite the long delay, NASA continued to cooperate with Boeing. And even in 2019, the agency announced that it was negotiating a contract with Boeing to purchase up to 10 SLS core stages, including the mission that will carry the first woman and next man to the moon by 2024. The news release did not mention costs. NASA and Boeing were not transparent about costs, but certainly production and operations costs for a single SLS launch are well north of $4 billion. In October 2018, NASA's Inspector General reported that the Boeing core stage contract had made up 40% of the $11.9 billion, or $4.76 billion spent on the SLS as of August 2018. Another report in 2021 by NASA's Office of Inspector General showed that NASA will likely spend a total of $93 billion on the Artemis program between 2012 and 2025, and that each SLS launch will cost about $4.1 billion a large chunk of the budget was attributed to hiring contractors in every U.S. state and more than 20 similar partners across Europe. There is no doubt that Boeing's influence in Washington is not small. This gained aerospace has over 100 years of history with its footprint dating back to the early days of the U.S.'s human space exploration. Of course, NASA isn't the only agency that covered up Boeing's faulty actions. Boeing's safety culture was again criticized in the wake of the January 5th incident in which a door plug blew off during an Alaska Airlines flight, leaving a gaping hole in the side of the Boeing 737 MAX. After the accident, the FAA admitted that it had been too hands-off off in its oversight of the troubled aircraft manufacturer. It's strange that while the FAA seems lenient with the fatal mistake of Boeing, it tends to be tough on startups like SpaceX. This has been demonstrated through Starship's initial launches, and even as SpaceX plans to increase the rocket's flight cadence, the agency often restricts them with strict regulations. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.